position. Now you, know, now you know his real agenda. He wants to distract from all the economic misery he's called at home. And so he uses divisions here at home. These divisions are the result of him. Under his leadership, we've seen a 251 percent increase in hate crimes, firebombings of synagogues, bullets shot at Jewish children's schools, a hundred churches burned and vandalized, and now we see sectarian riots on the street, streets of Brampton. This never happened before this Prime Minister. Does he take ownership for the divisions he's caused and the violence that has resulted? Canada has the wealthiest middle class in the world, and it's, Canada seems to be outstripping even the U.S. Today, it's the opposite. Canadians are poorer than Americans. Why is this Prime Minister creating jobs for Americans? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, the opposition leader continues to claim that Canada's broken, but at the same time, he wants to get rid of the investments that will help Canadians, for example, with the construction of new homes. The millions of dollars that we have sent to the government of Quebec to build new affordable housing, he, if it was up to him, he would cut and impose austerity on Quebecers and all Canadians. We don't, they don't want that. We don't want that. We need to invest to help alleviate the housing crisis and that not the kind of policies the opposition leader is proposing. Minister Stephen Harper, only 80 days to get a softwood lumber deal that put an end to the tariffs and re reimbursed that, the, what were already collected. And then this Liberal Prime Minister capitulated, allowed Trump to reimpose the tariffs and Biden to double them. Harper got us an exemption to buy America. This Prime Minister then capitulated allowed Trump and Biden to reimpose them, hurting our construction workers and our providers of steel. Why can't we have a carbon tax election so that we can have a prime minister that no longer capitulates to the Americans, but instead will stand up for Canada? Yeah. The right honourable prime minister. Mr. Speaker, since I just answered that question in French, allow me instead to take a moment to condemn unequivocally the violence we've seen in South Asian communities across the country over the past few nights. Let me be very, very clear. The individuals who are inciting violence and division and hatred in no way represent either the Sikh community or the Hindu community in Canada. At a time of Diwali and Bandi Chordivas, we're seeing communities come together to celebrate uh, their diversity and their strength. We will continue to stand for the unity of Canadians. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. The New York Times, 10 years ago, life in Canada home of the world's most affluent middle class. Median income in Canada appears to have surpassed median income in the United States. Yeah. Oh, what a decade can do. Now, American workers make almost $20,000 more than their Canadian counterparts. They get twice as much investment every single year. The gap between our per capita GDP and that of the United States is now the worst in a century wow. after this Prime Minister's rising taxes, bureaucracy and blocking of energy projects. I know why Harris and Trump want to create jobs for Americans, but why does this Prime Minister want to help them? Here, here. The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, the silence of the Conservative leader is deafening when it comes to what's happening in the South Asian communities right now. And it's a real shame. Not only is he not stepping forward to talk uh, about how all Canadians must stand together and all South Asian Canadians, Sikh, uh, Hindu, uh, Jain, Buddhist, uh, are celebrating together this weekend, but he even refuses to take the issue seriously enough to get the security clearance necessary to be briefed on threats to Canada and to Canadians. That's not leadership, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Now you, know, now you know his real agenda. He wants to distract from all the economic misery he's called at home. And so he uses divisions here at home. These divisions are the result of him. 
Under his leadership, we've seen a 251 percent increase in hate crimes, firebombings of synagogues, bullets shot at Jewish children's schools, a hundred churches burned and vandalized, and now we see sectarian riots on the street streets of Brampton. This never happened before this Prime Minister. Does he take ownership for the divisions he's caused and the violence that has resulted? Yeah. Order. Colleagues. I'm going to ask members, please, uh, especially members from the far end of the House, to please not take the, the, not take the floor unless they are recognized by the Speaker. The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, people watching that last answer will know uh, and note uh, the assuredness with which the Leader of the Opposition declared all the causes and the sources of uh, the terrible violence we're seeing. When the reality is, he refuses to take the necessary briefings that our security agencies are offering him to understand the threats to Canada. Why won't he get the security clearance necessary to protect Canadians? Colleagues, it does not do well uh, when on one side of the House is asked to keep quiet, the other side of the House should do the same. All members should do the same. Then I have I'm immensely concerned, Avika. I, I think what we're seeing is an attack on Canadian democracy, on mm. our freedom of religion. And it reminds me a lot of what we had been seeing in terms of jihadists who were doing the same thing in attacking Jewish synagogues. Mm. It's part of a pattern of behavior, and it's shown to be the unholy alliance that we see now between extremists, the jihadist extremists mm. with the Khalistani extremists. And, and they're perpetuate, perpetrating the same violence now on targeting another religious minority, Hindu Canadians. Everyone deserves to be able to worship in peace and to do so safely. But then for them to try to claim that they were somehow the victims, and, and yet they were the ones who brought flags, which they wielded as spears, as weapons, mm. to the grounds of a Hindu temple. And they were the ones who perpetrated the violence, and they're the victims. Mm. It's the exact same playbook that we've seen the violent jihadists, the pro Hamas terrorist supporters do the exact same thing to Jewish Canadians. And we must speak up and we must stand up with our Jewish and Hindu brothers and sisters. Mm. You know, when you say we must stand up, we must speak up. Now, why do you believe that Justin Trudeau hasn't really stood up, hasn't really spoken up as vociferously as one would have expected, Kevin? I think he is unfortunately prioritizing his short term political hmm. advantage of what he believes he can extract from trying to play both sides or in this case, choosing one side over another. I think the best person and I'm going to quote an individual who is a former liberal cabinet minister himself, who is a former liberal colleague of Justin Trudeau. Um, who later became Premier of British Columbia, and that is Ujjal Dessange. He himself is a sick Canadian. And he has pointed the finger specifically at Justin Trudeau as being the root cause of the sick extremism that we see today. Mm. We all know that Sikhs, like any diaspora community, are not a monolith. But instead, Justin Trudeau has given a voice and a platform to extremists within the Khalistani movement and, and now somehow falsely believes mm. that they, Khalistanis, represent over 800,000 Sikh Canadians, when we all know that is not true. Mm. 
Kevin, why has he done this? I mean, what is your reading? What is your understanding of how this entire issue has been handled? You know, many say that he's plain, simple, ignorant. Is he just being naive or you believe that he's been driven by real political interest? And will, th will this serve him politically at all, Kevin? I think it's no secret that, especially in British Columbia, there, there are about probably nine seats in the House of Commons where the Sikh community plays a big role. Hmm. Um, and they could decide who wins or who loses. These seats are primarily contested, uh, at least in, in previous elections, between the Liberal Party hmm. and the New Democrat Party, the Socialist Party here in Canada, who is led by Jagmeet Singh, who himself has been very critical, I think unfairly so, of, of India, willing to run with any wild allegations out there if it gave him any chance to be able to slam India, mm -hmm. who has been a longtime traditional ally of Canada. At a time where we have rising authoritarianism in the world, mm -hmm. we need to stand together as democracies. But both Justin Trudeau and Jagmeet Singh are willing to throw all of that out because they're all they care about is winning seats and winning power. And they're selling out our country for it of how people on the ground view this, I think as I speak with people of my constituency and other Torontonians and Canadians, anytime we see political violence, especially that targeting a religious minority, we find it absolutely shameful and disgusting. And we look to our leaders, our so-called leaders, to act, to defend religious freedom. And we see Justin Trudeau fail, not only fail Jewish Canadians, fail Christians, and now fail Hindu Canadians in his duty to safeguard our protected rights and the Ch Canadian Charter of, of Freedoms. Hmm. He is failing Canadians. And for what? Because he thinks he can cling to power for, at most, another year. It's absolutely disgraceful. I, I think for the Prime Minister to step onto the floor of the House of Commons, mm -hmm. to accuse a fellow democracy of an extrajudicial killing and claim he has credible evidence only to not be able to show what the credible evidence was was immensely damaging hmm. to bilateral relations and frankly stupid would the president of the united states have stepped onto the floor of congress and did the same thing of course not you leave it to the authorities to be able to do so and yet what we've seen is justin trudeau be willing to sacrifice this critical relationship for Canada mm. in the hopes of maybe not just the vote bank politics, but I think also to deflect from very real concerns about foreign interference. Mm. I don't think it was an accident that two days before the prime minister was to take the stand at an ongoing inquiry that we have on Canada, focusing primarily on Chinese foreign interference, we, we get a surprise Thanksgiving press conference, a press conference, Navika, on a national holiday mm. blaming India without really putting forward any evidence, but that allowed the prime minister to be able to deflect mm. from very real concerns about Chinese foreign interference and instead blame India. Now, to be clear, a Canadian citizen was killed mm. and 30 charges have been laid. It's now up to the courts to do their job if we're going to be a country that is rule of law. We know Mr. Najjar was not a choir boy, but still, he was a Canadian citizen. And I won't get into how he got citizenship, because I think there are a lot of questions there. But he was murdered. And in any democracy, a murder needs to be investigated and the perpetrators need to be held to justice. Hmm. But you don't politicize that. You don't go into the House of Commons and accuse a democracy of that. And you especially don't do it when you are the head of government. Mm. So a lot of questions have to be asked and all comes back to what we've been discussing. Why? Why does Justin Trudeau himself decide that he needs to take on the mantle for this? What does he have to gain? What is his motivation? And unfortunately, the most logical explanation is one where it is a sacrifice mm. of a key critical democratic relationship and Canada's rule of law for politics, or that all Canadians, hmm. including visitors, but ultimately Indians who choose to make Canada their permanent home are safe. And while it is a work in progress, as hmm. we've seen, unfortunately, with the latest violence targeting a, a Hindu temple, I am optimistic hmm. that the more we speak up, 
the more we stand up to extremism, hmm. whether it is Khalistanis, yes. the pro Hamas, or any other radicals, that ultimately we will be able to push back the tide of hate and terror Absolutely. to ensure that all Canadians are safe, hmm. whether it's Hindu Canadians, Jewish Canadians, or Christians. Tax hmm. and Brampton and Surrey are, are horrifying for me as a Canadian. Um, it is a massive uptick. Uh, it, it's a huge escalation of violence. It's crossed new lines. It We've seen attacks on temples, Hindu temples before. We've seen attacks on synagogues before in Canada. Synagogues have been shot at at midnight. We've seen churches being burned down and attacked. This is the first broad daylight attack on the devotees in this country. Um, the response from the police was disgusting. Uh, they acted as the arm of the Khalistanis. They attacked the Hindus. They did not push the Khalistanis off. They were attacking the Hindus in their own monitor. People from Peel Police were going crazy, were throwing punches at Hindus. Um, and it's Kristallnacht for Hindus in Canada. This was utterly preventable. We saw this coming. Uh, Panun and Sikhs for Justice were screaming that they were going to do this. They were advocating for violence against Hindus on Diwali for celebrating Diwali. To be fair to Panun, he claimed he wasn't being violent. He said, ask Hindus nicely to stop being Hindu, stop celebrating Diwali, and then if they refuse and continue to exist, then you attack them. This is the type of stuff. And this man is allowed to come on Canadian television, the state broadcast on CBC, where he advocated for, um, for that every Indian Canadian needs to be examined for dual loyalties and needs to make a statement of loyalty to Canada against the Indian government, must say they're anti-Modi or else be considered a double agent. And this woman's man was allowed to say this on the CBC while the supposedly bleeding heart liberal who is interviewing him is nodding along and smiling as he's talking about going through the, the what, taking aside one to two million can Canadians and, and examining them for their political views on Neander Modi to see if they're really Canadians. It's insane. It's absolutely insane. And then these people show up outside the Maunders and the police can't push them off the Maunder, can't say, oh, you know, this is a temple. You know, get get to the other side of the road now, you guys move. But they, they do, they're tough enough to start punching Hindus because they know the Hindus won't punch back. But they know that if they start attacking the Calistanis, well, then they're going to get whacked with some sticks, and that's a bit scary. So we see this all the time in Canada, where the police decide that they're going to enforce the law on the population that's more likely to listen to the law, to listen to reason. And it, the more, and it sets a terrible precedent. And this has been set for the last couple of years. The crazier and the more violent you are, the more you're allowed to get away with. And the more peaceful mm. you are, the more law-abiding you are, the more you adhere to Canadian values, the more likely you are willing to, you are to get beaten up by lunatics. And then the even greater to your part is the more peaceful you are when the lunatics attack you, the more likely the police are to attack you. So this is the message being sent. There is no part of the Canadian government um, that the that establishment has taken their side in any of this. There's, oh, they're making statements today. No one can name Khalistan. No one can name uh, the, uh, who the actual perpetrators are. People are being beat with Khalistani flags. The flags say Khalistan, and they're beaten on video. And the mayor of Brampton can't say Khalistan. Patrick Brown fails. The premier of Ontario, Doug Ford, can't say Khalistan. He fails. The prime minister of the country, Justin Trudeau, cannot say Khalistan. He fails. The leader of the NDP, well, he's a Khalistani, so let's not even go over here. And the leader of the opposition can't say Khalistan. So he fails. Only an, only Chandra Arya and one independent MP, Kevin Vong. Mm -hmm. Chandra Arya and Kevin Vong are the only two elected officials in this country out of the hundreds that were able to correctly determine who was the victim and who was the perpetrator in this attack that was caught on video. And it's disgusting as a Canadian. It's disgusting. Canada is a place where you should be able to worship freely. And, and it's, it's every level of the establishment. The police, the Peel police couldn't name the victims of the perpetrator. No one, no one has their back. And it's, it's, it's terrifying because it's going to get worse because the message being sent to the extremists is it's open season on Hindus. Absolute open season. Attack as many Hindus as you want and we'll arrest. For every Hindu you attack, we'll arrest one Hindu for you. That's the message being sent to the extremists and they hear it loud and clear. So expect Panoon to celebrate, make another video, 
I don't know, threaten to blow up some more airplanes, think of a new attack line, and then unleash his thugs on someone else. It's horrible. Mm. Uh, but We've seen words from Justin Trudeau. We have seen Justin Trudeau talk the talk half the time. Sometimes he talks against the talk, and he actually openly endorses the terrorists, but sometimes he talks the talk. And this is a time where he has mostly talked the talk. This man has never walked the walk. So until you see him walk the walk, preferably, until you see him take action, there is no reason to believe Justin Trudeau will take any action. He, you know, he will release some statements. Oh, hate has no place here. He'll find some um, incredibly far left, diehard liberal Hindu to stand next to and take a photo in three days from now and right. declare, you know, um, diversity is our strength. And this is all um, over and behind us. And just like he's been doing with the Jewish community as they consistently get attacked, nothing's ever been done. Uh, so it's a... It's par for the course. There, there is, there is no prospect of the Prime Minister of Canada jumping in to do the right thing. I wish he does. I hope this. I hope there's a clip of me saying all these mean things about him on the internet, and it's going viral. And I just look like the biggest idiot ever because the law and order has been restored in Canada uh, by like November fifth, and I just look like an absolute moron. I would love that, but um, betting markets uh, are not are, are are not predicting it. Well, the people who are say they're behind it, right? They're they're there in front of they're, they're all on camera. The Calistanians, they have their flags. Their faces are open. Um, they they seeks for justice has put out a statement saying they organized that protest. Panun, it's all his views are on video evidence, it, just like most things. Who are the crazy lunatics? Well, it's the people running around threatening to kill or harm or do everything. We have it on video. We saw who started the fight. We saw them wacky people's sticks. Their faces are clear. We know what organizations they belong to. It's the same, for the most part, same few dozen who go around and cause all the chaos at, at most events. We we know, I'm sure, we all know who we are. If the Canadian government, if the RCMP, if Peel Region Police, if CSIS, if any of our institutions wanted to do something about this, they could do something about this at any moment in time. They choose not to. Canada and dealer relationships are spiraling into the abyss. Um, it's not good. I mean, uh, I I I was very concerned September of 2023 uh, when we saw it going down. It has not gotten better over then. Um, people in India are claiming that they're at rock bottom. Um, I don't know if this is optimistic, but I will say you do not know Justin Trudeau. There never is a rock bottom. You still have another year left of Trudeau to go. So brace yourselves. It's going to get worse, most likely. Um yeah, I mean, hopefully someone, a new government can come in and pull this out of a tailspin. I think a lot depends on the U.S. election. If Trump gets in, um, there could, could be a massive shift in the conservative movement in the West because Trump seems to be the only one who even remotely understands India from our perspective. And the Canadian conservatives are very good. They're very good at monkey see, monkey do. They're not very creative. They're not trailblazers in any way. They're, they're a very scared party. Um, so if Trump sort of breaks new ground within the year before they get in and they see an actual framework of how to deal with India and a conservative dealing with India's issues, they can copy that. They, 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 they're they very good at copying things and they they understand what America is. They understand how to copy that. Um, if Kamala Harris gets in, then, okay, we're back in Trudeau land um, and it might be sort of irreparable damage done. And we'll even see how uh, after another year of, of Democrat insane policies, um, and driving our allies into the hands of our enemies um, and empowering them, those enemies. Um, I'm not sure where we'll even stand between India and the West um, uh, if that happens. So a lot of the questions of like foreign policy and how will relationships be in the future, a lot of that depends on Tuesday and, and the American election and who's the leader of the free world at the time. So um, the answer there is is completely different on, on Tuesday. So it, in my view, no real point of trying to answer read the tea leaves until uh until